John chapter 17 and we're going to read verses 6 through 11 on this morning. Amen. God speak in this place on today. This portion of scripture is actually a prayer prayed by Jesus to his father in heaven. Jesus prays, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you. And they believed that you sent me verse 9 I'll pray for them and I'm not praying for the world but for those you have given me for they are yours all I have is yours and all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them I will remain in the world no longer they are still in the world and I am coming to you Holy Father Jesus prays protect them by the power of your name the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one on today I want to continue to minister from this new series that we have begun for the month of August entitled All In United and Committed to the Vision Say it with me, All In I am united and committed to the vision Now if you speak the truth, I want you to, to not lie to but, but, but confess to your neighbor and say, neighbor I want you to know but I'm all in. I am united and committed to the vision. Come on, one last time. Put your hands together and bless God in this place. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. All in. United and committed to the vision. The word of God teaches us that there is power in unity. Jesus says in Mark 3 and 24, if a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. The CEV version or the common English version of the same scripture reads, a nation whose people fight against each other won't last very long. For their desire for disarray will cause them to subsidize their own demise. Second Corinthians 3 and 11 reads, Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree one another. Or agree with one another. Live in peace. And as a result, the glory or the God of love and peace will be with you. When the body of Christ stands unified in the truth of God's word, we find peace and protection in God's ark of safety. Say with me, when the body of Christ, come on, talk with conviction. Say, with the, when the body of Christ stands united in the truth, of God's word, we find peace and protection in God's ark of safety. Psalms 91, 1 and 7 reads, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 7 reads, A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not 
come near you. You must understand that the church of Christ represents God's ark of safety. Say it with me, the church of Christ represents God's ark of safety. In Matthew, in Matthew 16, uh, chapter 16, verses 18 through 19, Jesus Christ proclaimed, Upon this rock, upon the omnipotent power of my rectifying and redeeming blood, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he says, I will give unto you, I will give unto you, joint heirs i will give unto you of the co-beneficiaries to 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 the keys i will give unto you the keys or the principles of the kingdom of heaven and when you implement them when you implement the principles or the keys of the kingdom of heaven whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven and whatever you will loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven god help me along through here jesus says upon this rock i will build my church he was not talking about the illustrious uh, immaculate buildings that that are built with with the hands of man that we gather on a weekly basis to worship but he was talking about these earthly vessels that was created by the hands of god he he says upon 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 this rock i will build myself a people and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it so when sickness comes up against you sickness can't prevail when 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 poverty comes up against you poverty cannot prevail when any situation comes up against you that tries to rob you of your peace that situation cannot prevail because Jesus Christ has built his church upon the solid rock which is called his blood look at your neighbor say it's all about the blood um, there's power in the blood oh there's power Power in the blood. Tell your neighbor, I'm so glad that I have sense enough to plead the blood over my mind, over my body, over my children. And can I tell you something? The first place that Christ bled for you on his way to the cross was on his mind or on his brow. The first place that the Roman soldiers inflicted pain upon him was when they put a crown of thorns upon his brow. Why? Because he knew that if you could keep your mind, you could go through whatever test you had to go through. So the first place he bled for you was on his mind. Put your head on your mind and say, Lord, keep my mind in perfect peace as long as my mind has stayed on you. And then your neighbor said, you got to wake up and hear on today because pastor came to preach. The Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace as long as you keep your mind stayed on him. And, and Jesus says, here, I have built my church uh, upon this solid rock and the gates of hell shall not not prevail against it and I will give you I, I will give you my co-beneficiaries the keys or the principles of the kingdom of heaven and when you implement them tell someone you cannot plead promises and violate principles and expect to receive God's provision. I, I, I see so much of that. You have you have so many Bible quoters and Bible carriers who, who want to quote scripture but do their own thing. Tell them you can't quote scripture and do your own thing and expect for God to bless you. The Bible says if you be willing and obedient then you shall eat the good of the land. Nudge your neighbor. Tell them righteousness is still right. Tell them holiness is still right right tell them if you live right i hear my grandmother singing this song if you live right heaven belongs to you tell your neighbor it's not enough just to quote scripture you've got to live scripture look at your neighbor say it's not enough just to quote scripture you've got to live scripture oh i feel god in this place you must understand that as a result of being connected to his church and the kingdom of God as a born again believer we have access to the blessings and benefits that are the result of our kingdom citizenship and principle based living upon this rock Christ says I will build my church I will build an ark of safety and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I want you to know just in case you don't that impact worship center represents an ark of safety and when you are connected to it mm, through the spirit of unity you 
benefit from its anointed corporate covering. Tell someone I'm so glad to be connected. Tell them I'm so glad to be connected. And it's important that you understand that it's a privilege to be connected. It's a blessing to be connected. You must know that your connection and commitment gives you a covering unto Christ's return. Say with me, my connection and my commitment gives me a covering until Christ's return. Uh, I feel God in here. Thus we should not spitefully complain I've got to, but rather joyously proclaim I get to. Tell someone I get to serve. Tell someone I get to praise. Tell someone I get to worship. Tell someone I am privileged because an almighty God has given me access to a place oh, that my past don't deserve. Now maybe there's some of you who came out of your mother's womb speaking in tongue. Maybe your name is Miss Goody Two Shoes but I need to talk to sister don't do right. If you're here today and you can ride with pastor you know that if it had not been for grace and mercy you would have been consumed along. I ain't talking to y'all religious folk I feel like getting down today I ain't talking to those who came to be cute I ain't talking to you who looking so diddy I'm not talking to you who can't give God praise because you don't want to sweat out your perm but I'm talking to somebody who understands that if it had not been for God who is on your side you would have lost your mind a long time ago can I get at least two people to rest on your feet and give God a praise because he brought you out God in this place. I have to slap your neighbor high five and say neighbor I give him praise but I don't look like what I've gone through and I don't smell like what I'm stuck in. I feel God in here. I feel God in this place. Scream, scream with me all in. United and committed to the vision. Uh, uh, in the text in John 17 6 through 11 Jesus is communicating with God he praised God he, he praised about himself his disciples and future believers Christ was preparing to go back to be with his father in heaven Oh, his earthly assignment was finished and he was now passing the baton to his disciples. He, he, he had endured uh, the compressing of his majestic massive nature into a womb of an earthly mother named Mary. And he was born into this world, I'm preaching the gospel now. He, he was born into this world and, and then he lived a life that was above reproach for 33 and a half years. And then, and then he endured the agony and disdain of Calvary's cross. And then, and then he was entered, he entered into a tomb and he got up on the third day with all power in his hand. And now he has presented himself to his disciples to confirm in their spirits and in their mind that what he said was true and now he is positioning himself to ascend back to heaven to take his rightful place on the right side of God to act as our intercessor ah, so he's done everything that he could do Jesus has done all he could do he, he walked with them he, he talked with them. He taught them. He lived a model life before them. And now it was time for them to put into practice all that they had learned and seen. It was now time, watch this. It was now time for them to play their preemptive part in the purpose for Christ's earthly appearance. But Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them, verse 20 says, to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, someone say, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. 
you must understand that God desires to meet and bless us in this place every time we come together as well as use us to win others to him but we have a part to play in the process let your neighbor say yes God desires to meet us in this place as well as win others to him through us but we do have a part to play ask your neighbor do you know what your part is I know for instance, ask him, do you know what your part is? Or are you just coming to spectate? Do you have this hit or miss type of relationship with God where you're hoping to be blessed? But if you work the word, my God, you can't help but be blessed. Look at your neighbor and say, I didn't come today, today in hope. Tell your neighbor, I came today with faith. I came with divine expectation. I understand that when I bless the one who's able to bless me, he will give me blessings shaken together, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Tell somebody I'm walking in the overflow on today. Or you sitting by the wrong neighbor. Or your neighbor's acting like they're slow on today. Look at your neighbor and say, you need to get rid of on today. I came to get something from God. Tell your neighbor, if you don't feel like giving God praise on today, I need you to slide over some. I'm sending out an SOS. That means scoot over some. I, I need to hear from God on today. I need a miracle on today. And the only way I'm going to get that miracle is if I first put something in. Uh, what is my part to play, Krista? Our part to play is being on one accord. So if you have a disagreeable spirit, you're not playing your part. Your part is to be on one accord and being connected, Oof. committed and cooperative yes, with the corporate vision. Mm, God help me. Which in return releases God's favor upon your personal vision. Tell someone, tell someone, when I'm in one accord, when I'm connected, committed, and cooperative with the corporate vision, God will release his favor upon my personal vision. Our vision here at Impact is to be an oasis of love in our community. Empowering its people to live a holistic, fulfilled life through spiritual, intellectual, economic, and social empowerment. Look at someone and say, I'm a part of a ministry that empowers me spiritually, socially, intellectually, and economically. In order to be happy, Kelly. Your spirit has to be right with God. In order to be fulfilled, you have to cultivate meaningful relationships. Relationships that add to you rather than bleed you. In order to experience fulfillment in this life, you must not only have an empowered spirit and uh, worthwhile relationships, but, but you've got to feed your mind. Not only the word of God, but you must also read empowering books. So oh God help me. It's not enough just for you to read the word. Because I know some ignorant people who are astute in the word. Well, help me, help me, pastor. You can read the word, but you can't balance your checkbook. Oh, I'm about to get in trouble, but I don't care. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not enough for you just to speak in tongues when you can't speak to me. Tell somebody, stop all them tongues and speak to me. Oh, oh, oh God, God help me, God help me up in here. So, so in order for your vision to come to pass, you have to first commit to the vision of someone else. Well, Pastor, yes, of course you would say that because when we commit to your church, you are blessed. Wrong. 
I'm not preaching to you anything that I have not lived. I am the first. See, you don't have a pastor who talks to you what to do. You have a pastor who shows you what to do. And if you don't do it, it still will be done because I am a servant first. And many of you think that you're here because of what God told you. No, baby, you're here because pastor sold you. Uh, my, 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 because you don't get who you want. You get who you are. And the reason we have so many ride or die folk up in impact is because your pastor is ride or die. Do I have any ride or die soldiers? Can I get a hoop hoo? Bible says in Luke 16 and 12, I feel God in here. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property who will give you property of your own if if you have not been faithful over someone else's property what makes you think you qualify to have your own Ephesians 6 and 8 reads what you make happen for someone else God will make happen for you Tell somebody what you make happen for someone else, God will make happen for you. And see, this is the thing. What you make happen for someone else, when God does it for you, it's going to take place in multiplied form. You see, you see, because God will not be outdone by you. Old school said like this. When I gave, God gave, gave. So when I gave, gave, God gave, gave, gave. So I gave, 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 and God gave, 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 gave. So I gave, 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 and God gave, 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 gave. And I had to come to my righteous mind and say, I just can't beat God's giving because his resources are inexhaustible. The Bible says, he that comes to God must first believe that he is and that he will reward those that diligently seek him. Which means God understands that in order for you to come to him, you must first understand that he's able to do for you what you can't do for yourself. What you make happen for someone else, God will make happen for you. Look at your neighbor and say, when you bless me, God will bless you. Now ask them, ask them how you want to bless me, how you want to bless me, Text, how you want to bless me. Tell them I take cash, you can write me a check, or they have an ATM or a machine right across the street. We can go ahead and swipe my blessing. You can take me shopping. I like ties, I like suits, I like shoes. You can pay for me to get my hair done, you can pay for me to get my nails manicured and, and my toes pedicured. How you want to bless me? Because when you bless me, God's going to bless you in multiplied form. Say all in. United and committed to the vision. Now, Gary, the question is, what does it mean to be all in? Y'all see what happens when y'all let pastor get some sleep? The question is, what does it mean to be all in? To be all in means that I am willing to do my part to ensure the continued success of the ministry that is blessing and empowering my life. I'm all in when I support the vision of the house with no hidden agenda. Mm -hmm. It's going to get quiet right long through here. So just, just look straight ahead and just nod your head. Just nod your head. I'm all in when I follow leadership without an undermining disposition. Mm, yeah. I'm all in when I serve in ministry with humility. I'm all in when I learn how to pray and encourage other members instead of gossiping about them and discouraging them. I'm all in when I am cons consistent in my attendance. God help me, God help me. I'm all in when I am consistent in returning my tithe. Ah, I got to put my kickstand down right there because some of y'all can't wait for the summer so you can take vacation so you can rob God. How many of you all took your tithe to Disney World this year? Took God's money to Vegas with your gambling stuff and lost everything. I'm all in. God help me when I'm consistent.
consistent in returning my tithe and giving my offering to the storehouse that blesses me and my family and my community. To be all in is synonymous with commitment, dedication, loyalty, and faithfulness. And the reason why so many of us experience sporadic seasons of success is because we are inconsistent. We refuse to commit to the things of God. We commit to, oh God help me, we commit to sorority and fraternal organizations. We, we commit to unproductive relationships. We, we commit to cultivating our careers. We, we will even commit to a dead end job. And then have the nerve to turn around and ask God to excel us in the very thing that we have esteemed above him. Turn around and ask God to excel us in the very thing that we have esteemed above him. And your Bible says in Deuteronomy 4 and 2, for the Lord your God is a consuming fire, a jealous God, which means anything that you put above him, he will burn it up. Yeah. Word of God reads in Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added. Oh, you see how quiet this long through here? You see how quiet this long through here? Because many times we pray for things that we don't qualify to receive. We're not committed to him, but we want him to be committed to us. We won't bless his name, but we want him to bless us. Tell somebody, I'm praying that God helps me right along through this part. Say, that this is the part of the sermon that I need. When you get tired of sporadic seasons of success and desire of supernatural sustaining, you have but to commit to the things of God. Ask me how I know. Your Bible records in St. Matthew 25 and 23. If you're faithful over a few things. If, if, if you're faithful over a few things. He will make you ruler over many. In Joshua chapter 24. Joshua is talking to his fellow countrymen as they contemplate adultery and he says if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord choose you this day whom you will serve but as for me and my house we will serve the Lord look at I don't know what's going on in your house but as for me and my house the place I pay bills we are gonna serve the Lord and I want to have a teenager in my house who can't worship who can't come to worship Thank you, Jesus. I won't have a 21-year-old in my house who ain't paying no bills, who can't come to worship. No, baby, everybody on this roof, we go to church on Sunday. I'm not talking to parents who are afraid of their children, am I? Because some of y'all, you know, you look like, ooh, pastor, ooh. Whatever. If you 32 and up under my roof, we're going to serve. I, see, I can't allow a blessing blocker to abide under my roof. See, some of y'all that. See, some of y'all left some blessing blockers back home. Some of y'all left some blessing blockers back You don't understand that the reason that your house ain't blessed is because you got some interference up in there. And you don't know what they're doing in your house while you in worship. I, the Holy Ghost just gave me that. You got to understand what's going on in your house even when you're not there. It's real quiet. It's real quiet, but some of y'all wondering, you know, you have, a, you have a real good time in church on, 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 on Sunday morning, and when you go home Sunday night, you know, you, you're catching hell. Why? Because you left hell home. Sometimes you got to bring hell to church to get delivered from hell. I'm preaching better than you responding. If you want hell to be delivered, bring hell to the house. All right, all right, all right. Somebody scream all in. All in. So united, united. and 
committed to the vision. Now, now, we talked about unity, and I want you to remember that unity means to transform a combination into one. It is the combining or joining of separate entities to create a solidified force. To unify is to make something whole or complete by joining separate parts. And the reason why many f people feel incomplete and are easily broken is because they refuse to connect and commit to unity. It's like a little pinky finger just waving in the wind. If, 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 if you grab this pinky, you can, you can pretty much do what you want with it if you grab it with an open hand. You can, you can bend it from side to side, and if you apply enough force, you could break it. But when this pinky unifies with the rest of the hand, it makes a fist which represents a force that can knock the devil off of his block. And if you want to stop being broken in your life, and if you want to stop being tossed to and fro, you have but to unify. Wave that pinky, wave that pinky, wave that pinky. You see that pinky? Do you see how vulnerable it is? By itself, now make a fist. And, and if you notice, if you notice, the pinky, if you curl it right, is the most solidified finger in the force of your fist. And say, so I know my wife can do it because she has little, she has little curved fingers. She has little, she has little curved finger. See, see, make that picky. See, in other words, you can be the smallest one in the unit, but if you curl into it right, you can be the most protected. You ain't got to be the thumb. You don't even have to be the middle finger. I thought you'd catch that. You can be the pinky and be the most significant in the bunch. Because you're covered and protected because of unity. Tell someone I have protection because I believe in unity. In marriage, unity is the joining of two people. Two lives being intertwined into one. But the Bible reads, for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave unto his wife and the two shall become one flesh in the church we have different people from different backgrounds and different opinions derived from their life experience being brought unto one corporate vision. The Bible says that when we come together in unity, it is a good and pleasant thing. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity and in the church. Unity is paramount. Proclaim with me in the church. Unity is paramount. It's important. Why? Because when people come who are not saved and they see that we can live peacefully together and with love for one another, they desire to be a part. Now, you must understand that there are four categories and characteristics uh, uh, that I have a pastoral charge to deal with. There are four categories and characteristics that, that make up the church that I have a pastoral charge to deal with. And, and these, these, these characteristics or, or these categories present themselves in the form of animals. The first one is a sheep. The second one is a goat. Mm -hmm. I ain't calling you no goat. I'm just trying, trying to prove a point here. And then you have foxes. And then you have wolves. So, 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 so if you're here today, you may be sitting next to a sheep. Mm. You may be sitting next to a goat. You may be sitting next to a fox. Or you may be sitting next to a wolf. Well, Pastor, break it down. Sheep follow. Goats buck. Foxes hustle. And wolves devour. All right. Sheep just want to be led. They want to be empowered. Ghosts won't do their own thing. They don't have the courage to create their own platform, so they want to shine on yours. Foxes think that they're smarter than everyone, and they try to implement street hustle even in the church. And then a wolf 
just desires to devour because he's possessed or she's possessed by a spirit of greed. Sheep hollow, goats buck, foxes hustle, wolves devour. What is my pastoral charge to these categories? I must lead and empower the sheep. I must confront and correct the goat. I must watch and teach the fox. And I must drive out the wolf. And when I lead and empower the sheep, when I confront and correct the goat, when I watch and teach the fox and drive out the wolf, I create a habitat that is conducive for church growth. 